What is VCI? Brain Computer Interface is a state of the art technology that translates brain signals into commands that can be used to communicate with other people or to control external devices. Well, with that in mind, let's take a look at how a brain computer interface works. Welcome to the chapter 4 Internet of Thoughts. This is Dinwan Jai Kraman, and let's talk about this. Non verbal communication. Communication without the use of spoken language. Usually, non verbal communication includes gestures, facial expressions, body positions, cultural and environment conditions, or can be ambiguous that may affect any encounter between people. In a much more simple way, non verbal communication is a communication way without words that occurs person to person. Inside our brain's central nerve system, for each task we do, a pulse generated within neurotransmitters could be talking, waving a hand, or it can be anything else. When you need to read brain signals, there comes the role of BCI. Brain Computer Interface is a collaboration between a brain and a device that enables a signal from the brain to direct some external activity, such as control of a cursor or a prosthetic limb. First, it captures the neuron signals from the brain, then it sends to signal filtration and feature extraction. Depending on the requirement, the signals can be classified and make it used to input command to an external device or application. A neurotransmitter is defined as a chemical messenger that carries, boosts and balances signals between neurons or nerve cells and other cells in the body. These chemical messengers can affect a wide variety of both physical and psychological functions including heart rate, sleep, appetite, mood, and fear. In order to access the neurotransmitter signals, we need to capture them. Then we need devices which are capable of reading brain waves. There are three types of methods which we can use to capture the brain signal. First, non-invasive. We can capture the brain signals with the help of a wearable physical device, for an example, emotive. Second, semi-invasive. Inserting a microchip in between scalp and the skull. Third, invasive inserting a chip inside the brain neuroparticles. Talking about EEG electrode location, the brain produces different, objectively recognized and distinguishable electrical patterns which can be detected by electrodes on the skin. These patterns might vary and can be affected by multiple extrinsic factors such as age, prescription drugs, somatic diagnosis, neurological injury and substance abuse. Each electrode placement site has a letter to identify the lobe or the area of the brain it is reading from. Initially, these locations are categorized as follows. Prefrontal defined as FB, frontal defined as F, temporal defined as T, parietal defined as C, occipital defined as O, and central defined as C. Most popular brain neural signals can be categorized as EEG and EOG signals. Classifying means a range of groups according to their observed similarity. So streaming data, also real-time classification. Outputting command could be controlling a robot arm or controlling a mouse using our own thumb. Talking about real-time classification. So the Tesla is a very well-recognized name, right? Yes, one of the biggest electrical car manufacturers in USA. So they have something called Tesla Autopilot in their vehicles which comes with autonomous lane centering, adaptive cruise control, self-parking and navigate autonomously. Yes, they are using real-time classification for make it running. On the other hand, EEG classification. So the pipeline includes artifact removal, feature extraction and classification. On the most basic level, an EEG dataset consists of 2D matrix of real values that represent brain generated potentials recorded on the scalp associated with specific task conditions. So this requires huge computational power since it uses real-time data classification, which will bring high level of data accuracy. However, there are many researchers reported about using machine learning for brain signal classification in real time. Researchers have been working on BCI-powered exoskeletons, drones, robots since the BCI was founded. 
talking about Might Control Redbot, a brain-to-brain -brain system research. So this Redbot equipped with a micro camera mounted on its back. It was placed in a sand table to execute search missions. A person wearing a wireless PC headset watches videos of the experiment form from the camera live stream. When the person thinks where the rat needs to go, the brain signals are transmitted wirelessly to a computer and it decodes the brain signals and converted to stimulate the brain of the ratbot to turn left, turn right or to go forward. Similar to this, there are plenty of PCI controlled research. According to the literature reviews, BCI divides into two parts, independent and dependent. Dependent means that the BCI does require some control over peripheral nerves and muscles. Yes, it's something like generating a signal via eye gaze control. Whether independent BCI solely rely on brain activity. Endogenous means the BCI is based only on spontaneously generating brain patterns, like motor imagery. On the other hand, exogenous means the BCI is based on brain responses to external stimulus like P300. According to my findings, by definition, endogenous BCI are necessarily independent. However, exogenous BCI can be either independent or dependent. One of the biggest challenges in developing BCI technology has been the development of electrode devices and surgical methods that are minimally invasive. In the traditional BCI model, the brain accepts an implanted mechanical device and controls the devices as a natural part of its representation of the body. Much current research is focused on the potential on non-invasive BCI. So I hope you all learned something about brain computer interfaces and how they work. So that's pretty much for the chapter 4 video. I'll see you around.